We're learning together in Lakut Sichas Chaylek Yud Gimel, Parshas Bamidbar Sicha Beis, a Sicha that the Rebbe said in the Fabrengen of Shabbos Parshas Bamidbar, Tovshin Chof Zayin. It's interesting that although this is a Rashi Sicha, he doesn't follow the typical style of the Rebbe's Rashi Sichas, where usually in the Rebbe's Rashi Sichas he takes one Rashi, asks many questions, um, gives an answer that sort of makes you come back and see this, the entire Rashi differently. The Rebbe is usually medayik in every single word of this particular Rashi. This particular Sicha doesn't delve that particularly deeply into any one particular Rashi, but rather what it does is it takes a group of psukim and analyzes all the Rashis together on those series of psukim. In the end, the Sicha analyzes and explains actually seven or eight uh, Rashis all together in one Sicha in a series of about two or three Pesukim. So in, it's, we're referring here to in Parshas Bamidbar, in the beginning of Perak Gimel, from Pasuk Vov, all the way through to Pasuk Yud Beis. And here the Torah is talking specifically about the Avoida of the Leviim what they did in the Mishkan, and what their role and what their job was. The Rebbe really focuses on one Nakuda, on one main idea, and based on this explains all the Rashis that are involved, or many of the Rashis that are involved in these Pesukim. I want to start with first explaining what is the main Chiddush, what is the main Vort, the, the contribution that the Rebbe makes here in the Sicha, and then we'll learn together the Rashis, the way the Rebbe learns them, and we'll try to explain how the Rebbe sees this guy, this Mahalach, in the Rashi's, uh, in, the, in the Pesukim, as we learn them. Excuse me. The Nakuda that the Rebbe explains here is that the Levim really had two primary jobs, two primary types of jobs that they were involved with in the Mishkan. One was as a support, as an Ezra, the Siyua. One was as a help to the Kayanim. The other one was Bishlichusam of the Bnei Yisrael. One, the other one was as emissaries of the Jewish people. They were not the same. That which they did to help the Koyanim, they did not do as emissaries of the Yidden. That which they did as emissaries and shluchim of the Yidden was not done to help the Koyanim. And the jobs were different in nature as well. What they did to help the Koyanim was they protected the Mishkan. Protected the Mishkan from what? From making sure that Yidden, that Zorim, that non-Koyanim would not enter it. What happens later on in Chumash we learn the Jewish people complain to Hashem. They say to Hashem, we're afraid. Anybody who comes close to the Mishkan, if they don't belong there, is going to perish. The Jewish people say, how can we ever be sure that we don't enter into the Mishkan by mistake and God forbid die because of it? So Hashem appointed the Koyanim. Hashem said to Aaron, Ato, Bonecho, Beis Avicho. Hashem appointed Aaron and his sons, the Koyanim, to be in charge, to protect the Mishkan, to make sure that the Jews never go in there and to protect the Jews, to make sure they, go, they, they never go into the Mishkan, even by mistake. That was the job that was given primarily to the Koyanim. In order to help the Koyanim with this job of making sure the Yidin never went into the Mishkan when they weren't supposed to, Hashem gave them the Koyanim to assist them in this effort. That was one job that the Leviim had, helping the Koyanim to ensure that the Yidin never went into the Mishkan in places where they weren't supposed to. Actually, the Rebbe explains, that job was nothing positive. They did, for this itself, the Levim didn't actually do anything in the Mishkan itself. There was no positive avoida um, that, that was involved in this. It was really just protecting uh, the Yidin and the Mishkan to make sure that nobody went in. But that was only one part of the job of the Levim in the Mishkan. The other part of the avoid the Levim in the Mishkan included everything else that the Levim did. They're taking a part of the Mishkan. They're carrying the Mishkan. They're putting it back together. They're singing in the Mishkan. Everything else that the Levim did was included in the second category of avoid the Levim. This one, the second category of the avoid the Levim was done by of the, of the Bnei Yisrael. It was inherently the job of the Bnei Yisrael to do in the Mishkan. The Levim were their shluchim to do this job in their place. And again, this included everything else, all the other positive avoidance that the Levim did in the Mishkan 
other than protecting it and guarding it to make sure that Yisraelim didn't go in, everything else was done b'shlichusam of the Bnei Yisrael um, in, 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 in all the avoidance of the Levim. These were the two primary avoidance that the Levim had in the Mishkan. Now, in this parsha that we're going to learn together, so there's two psukim, posuk Zion and posuk Ches, in the beginning of Paragimel, which are very, very similar in the wording. In fact, the Rebbe points out the wording is basically almost identical in these two psukim. Posuk Zion says, again, talking about the avoid of the Levim, Posuk Zion says, V'shomru es mishmartoi, V'es mishmeres kolo eido lifnei oil moye lavoid es avoid es amishkon, and Posuk Ches says, V'shomru es kol kloi oil moye, V'es mishmeres b'nei Yisrael, lavoid es avoid es amishkon. Why is, why is the Torah basically saying the same thing twice? So the Rebbe will say, although the words sound very similar, but they're referring to two completely different aspects in the Avoid of the Levim in the Mishkan. The first one, Posek Zayin, V'shomrus Mishmartoi, Ves Mishmeres Kolo Eidah, is referring to the Avoida that the Levim did in assistance of the Koyanim, Ezra V'siyu Ala Koyanim, to help them to make sure that Yidin did not go into the Mishkan, that Yidin did not go in where they weren't supposed to go. And the second Posek, Posek Ches, V'shomros kol kleo yelmoid v'smishmeres b'nei Yisrael, speaks of a positive avoida that the Levim did actually in the Mishkan itself, the work that they did, taking it apart, carrying it, putting it back together, singing in the Mishkan, etc. All the other things that the Levim did, a positive avoidance in the Mishkan itself, which were done not as siyua for the koyanim, but rather as an avoida, which the Jewish people were appointed to do, bishlichusam of the Yidin, as emissaries on behalf of all of the, of, of all of the Bnei Yisrael. Based on this yesoid, based on this idea, the Rebbe learns all the Rashis, or almost all the Rashis here in this Parsha, and let's go through them one at a time. Posuk, posuk Vov, well, Posuk Hey begins, Vaidab Hashem al Moshe Leimah, Hashem spoke to Moshe, Hakre Vesmati Levi, the Posuk says in Posuk Vov, bring close the Shevet Levi, Vahamadato Oisoy Lifnei Aaron Akoyen, put them in front of Aaron Akoyen, Vesherisu Oisoy, and they, the Levim, Shall serve him. Zokta Rashi, v'sheres hu oisay u'mahu hasheres. What was the service that the Yidden did on be, for Aaron on, that, that that they did to serve him? Zokta Rashi, what was the service? Here Rashi quotes the first three words of the next pasuk of pasuk Zion, v'shamru es mishmartoi, and he explains, fish shmiras hamikdosh alav. Inherently, the job of protecting the Mishkan. To make sure Shalai Yikrav Zor, to make sure that no Yisraelim would go into the Mishkan, was inherently a job placed on Aaron Akoyin. Kmoshanema, like the Posak says later on, Ato Ubonecho Besavicho Itoch, Tisuas Avoyna Mikdosh. Hashem told Aaron, You will carry the sin, you will carry the Aveira if Ayid, who's not supposed to be in the Mishkan, walks in there. You're in charge and you're responsible. And the Levim were there to help Aaron and his sons, the Kayanim, to make sure that Yisraelim never went into the Mishkan when they weren't supposed to. Zuhi Hasheris, Rashi says. This is the service that the Levim did for Aaron Akoyin and his sons. They helped him with his job. It, was inherent, it wasn't inherently the job of the Levim. It was inherently the job of the Kayanim. The Levim were there to help them, to make sure that Yisraelim didn't go in. This is the Sherus, the service that they did for Aaron and his sons, the Koyanim. They helped him with his job of making sure Yidin didn't go into the, didn't go into the Mishkan and Beis Mikdash. Clear. Next Pasuk. V'shomru es mishmartoi. Now again, these words, V'shomru es mishmartoi, were quoted by Rashi in the previous Rashi. V'shomru es mishmartoi, Rashi said before, that the Levim helped the Koyhanim protect the Mishkan. But here Rashi touches the words V'shomros Mishmartoi differently. Zakt Rashi V'shomros Mishmartoi Posek Zayin. What does it mean V'shomros Mishmartoi? Kol minoy sheha'oda memuna alav. Any appointment, any job that a person has in which he is appointed to a certain position or given a certain uh, tafkid, given a certain job to take care of. Mutal of Lassai. Kori Mishmeres. We call it Mishmeres. And here the question is, 
Why is Rashi changing the word Mishmeres? From the simple Pshat of Mishmeres, which means Shmira, which means protection. Why are we changing it? All of a sudden, Mishmeres doesn't mean to protect. Mishmeres means a, a job appointment that you have. Why is Rashi changing the meaning of the word Mishmeres? Explains the Rebbe, because of the Yesoid which we just explained. We just explained that the Levim had two jobs. One was to protect the Mishkan, which they did to help the Kayanim. The other one was to work in the Mishkan, which they did, Bishlichusam, which they did as emissaries of the Bnei Yisrael. The Torah is about to use this word, Mishmeres, in the context of both jobs that the Levim were going to do. The Torah is about to describe both jobs as a Mishmeres, the one which they did for the Koyanim and the ones which they did for Yisraelim. Both of them are going to be called Mishmeres. So already now, says the Rebbe, Rashi is preempting. Rashi is saying, don't touch here the word Mishmeres just in the form of Shmira of protection. If you do that, you're going to get stuck in the next Pesach. In the next Pesach, the Torah is going to talk about a job that the Levim did as emissaries of Bnei Yisrael. As emissaries of Bnei Yisrael, they weren't protecting the Mishkan. Protecting the Mishkan they did as emissaries on behalf of the Kayanim. So the word Mishmeres, which is going to be used in describing the Avoida, that the Yidin did to help to, as, as emissaries of Bnei Yisrael in the next Pasuk, over there you're going to have to touch the word Mishmeres as a job, not as protection. Explains the Rebbe, doesn't make sense to take the same word Mishmeres, which the Torah in the course of these Pesukim will use the same word over and over and over again, and sometimes explain it this way and sometimes explain it that way. Rashi says, we have to, Rashi says we have to find a pshat, a way to touch the word Mishmeres, which will fit throughout, throughout the entire thing. So Rashi says, you know what the word Mishmeres means? Kol olav, it's called Mishmeres. Any job that a person has is called Mishmeres. It doesn't matter what type of job the Levim, which, what type of job of the Levim we're referring to, whether they're helping the Koyanim or whether they're, they're serving on behalf of the Israelim. Either way, we can call it Mishmeres. No problem. Mishmeres means Aminu Shehodam Emunah Olav. And again, I, I want to highlight this point. Even though in the previous Rashi, which we just learned in Vesher Suwaisi. Rashi said, Ma'u asherus v'shomrus mishmartoi. What is the job v'shomrus mishmartoi? Rashi quotes these words. And Rashi in the previous Rashi clearly is referring to the job of protection. Because in the previous Rashi, Rashi is talking about the job that the Levim did for the Koyanim. In, in, help, in helping the Koyanim. And there, of course, we're talking about protection. So yes, the job they did for the Koyanim was protecting the Mishkan. But when we get to the next Pesach and it comes to the words Vishamurus Mishmartoi, here we're going to have to change the Pshat of the word Mishmeres. This is the way the Rebbe Taichas and Rashi. Here we're going to have to change the Pshat of the word Mishmeres. Mishmeres from here on now no longer means protection. Because the Torah will use the same word in the context of both Avoidus, which the Levim did for the Kohanim and for the Yisraelim. And so the Pesach reads, Vishamurus Mishmartoi, that the Levim were given this job, this position. What was it? The Pesach goes on to say, Ve'es mishmeres kol ha'eda. V'shomer es mishmartoi, Pesach zayin, V'shomer es mishmartoi, Ve'es mishmeres kol ha'eda. Here by the words mishmeres kol ha'eda, Rashi says nothing. Why? Because there's nothing that needs to be explained. Everything was already explained. What is the job that the Yidin did on behalf of helping the Koyanim? V'shomer es mishmartoi. They, did, they had this position, they had this job of protecting the Jewish people to make sure to make sure that they didn't go into the, into the Mishkan. And that was Mishkan. That was the first job that the Levim did in the Mishkan. Continues the Torah, Pasuk Ches. The Yilavim also had a job, they also had a minuit, they also had a position that involved the clay oil moyed, the vessels of the oil moyed. Ves mishmeres b'nei Yisrael, excuse me, v'shamu called clay oil moyed. Ves mishmeres b'nei Yisrael. Lavei desavei desamishkan. What's the Torah referring to here? V'shamu, posa kres, v'shamu es called clay oil moyed, ves mishmeres b'nei Yisrael. What's the Torah referring to here? Here, clearly, we're no longer talking about protecting anything, because we already said that in the previous Pasuk. What are we talking about now? Now we're talking about the avoida that the Jewish people did on behalf of the Yidin. The avoida which they did 
in the oil moyer itself, not just protecting it from the outside to make sure others, Yisrael, wouldn't come into the Mishkan. Vishamru is called clay oil moyed, the job that involved the vessels of the Mishkan itself. And then on the words, Vesmashmeras b'nei Yisrael, Rashi articulates this clearly. Vesmashmeras b'nei Yisrael, Zakt Rashi, Shakul on Hoyu Zakuk in Litzorche Amikdash. Why is this called Vesmashmeras b'nei Yisrael? We're not, again, we're not talking here about protecting the B'nai Yisrael. That was a job that they did to help the Koyanim. That's the previous Pasuk. So what's the meaning here of Mishmeres B'nai Yisrael? So Rashi, you know what it means with Mishmeres B'nai Yisrael? I'm reading from Rashi. Shekulon hoyus kukim letzorchei hamikdosh ele shalavim boim tachteim bishlichusam When the Torah says here, Ves Mishmeres B'nai Yisrael, says Rashi, Mishmeres B'nai Yisrael, the second time around, doesn't mean to protect the Eden. Mishmeres B'nai Yisrael this time means that it was a job which they did on behalf of the B'nai Yisrael. They did it on their behalf of the Eden and as shluchim of the Eden. Bishlichusam. L'fichach loikchem meisus b'schoron, says Rashi. This is the reason why the, Jew, why the Levim took meiser from the Eden as a reward for doing this job. Because in truth, the job that the Levim did in the Mishkan was inherently a job that all the Bnei Yisrael should have been doing, in, been doing in the Mishkan. The Levim were their shluchim to do this job on their behalf. And since the Rebbe adds, this is a shtikol chidosh of Rashi Hestis, that everything else that the Levim did in the Mishkan, they did as shluchim of the Yisraelim, Rashi brings a, qu- a pasuk, Ki socharu lachem chelav avedaschem, where the Pesach says, where the Rashi says, here you see the Pesach says, Beferish, that the Levim were paid as a schar, chelef as, as an exchange for their avoider, which they did, the Yisraelim paid them. Why would the Yisraelim pay them for the job that the Levim did? What, why is it the Levim's responsibility to pay, why is it the Yisraelim's responsibility to pay the Levim for this job? Answer, answer says Rashi, because this was inherently a job which the Yisraelim were supposed to do. The Levim did it as their emissaries and as their shluch. This becomes, according to Rashi, the pshat of the words, Ves mishmeres b'nei Yisrael, l'avodes avodes ha-mishkan, that it was actually inherently mishmeres, it was actually inherently the job of the Yidin, of the b'nei Yisrael. Which, l'avodes avodes ha-mishkan, they were supposed to do the avodes ha-mishkan. The Levim did it on their behalf and got paid for it in the form of maestros. That's Pasuk Ches. Next, Pasuk Tes. Pasa continues, V'nasato es ha-levim la-aron u-levanov. Hashem says to Moshe, you should give the levim to Aaron and to his sons. Nesunim, nesunim, hey maloi, me'es b'nei Yisrael. On the words, nesunim, nesunim, on the double expression, nesunim, nesunim, Rashi says, nothing. No explanation on why there is a double expression in the Pasuk, nesunim, nesunim. Frek the Rebbe, why no explanation and a double expression? In fact, in Parshas Baha'u'llah, Scha, later on, we'll find on the, words, on the same two words, Nesunim, Nesunim, Rashi explains why the Torah uses a double expression. Nesunim, Nesunim says Rashi, Nesunim Lamasa, Nesunim Lashir. Two jobs, the, the, the double expression, Nesunim, Nesunim, referring to two jobs that the Levim had. They had to carry the objects of the Mishkan and they had to sing in the Mishkan. Nesunim, Nesunim. No. So why doesn't Rashi teach you Nesunim, Nesunim? The same thing. Nesunim, Lamasa, Nesunim, Lashir. Why no explanation? Says the Rebbe once again, because of the same Yesoi, because of the same idea which we're talking about. Rashi over here cannot teach Nesunim, Nesunim. Nesunim, Lamasa, Nesunim, Lashir. Because the Posuk says, V'nasato salavim la'arnu levonov, nesunim, nesunim heimaloi. We're talking, we're going back to the avoida which the Levim did to help the Koyanim. V'nasato salavim la'arnu levonov. Hashem says, give the Levim to Aaron and to his sons, that they, the Levim, should help him. No, if they should help him, then we're not talking about the avoider which the Levim did of carrying the Mishkan and singing in the Mishkan. That avoider wasn't done to help Koyanim. That avoider was done b'shlichusam shol b'nei Yisrael. So Rashi cannot teach nesunim nesunim here, nesunim lamasa nesunim lashir. The Pesach is only talking about one thing, 
Nesunim, Nesunim, Heim Oloi, what were the Levim given to the Koyanim to help them with? Only one thing. Protecting the Mishkan to make sure Yidin don't go inside. That's all the Pasuk is referring to here. That was the only thing that the Levim did but to Ezra V'siyu ala Koyanim. And so Rashi cannot teach you like he teaches him Ba'aloyzcha, Nesunim Lamas and Nesunim Lashir. That's obviously not what the Pasuk is referring to. The Pasuk is obviously going back to referring to the Avoid which the Levim did to help the Koyanim in protecting the Mishkan. And then the Pasuk concludes, on the words Me'es Bnei Yisrael, you have one more Rashi. Me'es Bnei Yisrael, Rashi says, K'moi mitoich Bnei Yisrael. When it says Me'es Bnei Yisrael, it means not from the Bnei Yisrael, but mitoich Bnei Yisrael, from among the Bnei Yisrael. And here again, when you first read the Rashi, it's very difficult to understand. What does Rashi want? Nesunim, nesunim, heim oloi me'es Bnei Yisrael, on the surface would seem like a very normal thing to say. That these Levim were given me'es Bnei Yisrael from the Yidin to the Koyanim to help them. Why does Rashi have to change the Pshat? Me'es Bnei Yisrael, says Rashi, doesn't mean from the Bnei Yisrael, it means mitoich Bnei Yisrael from among the Bnei Yisrael. But what's kvetched? What's kvetched the Rashi? What's the, what's the problem? Me'es Bnei Yisrael from the Yidin. No, says Rashi. Me'es Bnei Yisrael here does not mean from the Yidin. It cannot mean from the Yidin. Why not? Because we're not taught, because again, there were two avoidance which the Levim did. One they did to help the Kayanim. The other one they did as representatives of, Klal, of, of Bnei Yisrael. But they were two different avoidance. The avoidance which they did to help the Kayanim wasn't the same avoidance that they did as representatives of the Yisraelim. And the avoidance they did as representatives of the Yisraelim wasn't done to help the Kayanim. So you can't have it both ways. You can't say, Nesunim, Nesunim, Hey Maloi, that this is an avoider which the Levim did to help the Koyanim. Me'es b'nei Yisrael from the Yidin. If it's to help the Koyanim, then it's not from the Yidin. Then it's not representing the Yidin. It's not shluchim of the Yidin. If it's to help the Koyanim, then you can't touch that the Yisraelim, so to speak, gave them to the Koyanim to help the Koyanim. That would be a, a confusion of both types of avoiders. Rashi says, don't worry. Me'es b'nei Yisrael here will touch it differently. Me'es b'nei Yisrael means mitoich b'nei Yisrael, from among the b'nei Yisrael. Mish'ar kol o'eda nivdalu l'kach. They were separated, b'gzeras mamokim. They were separated by Hashem. Me'es b'nei Yisrael, from among the b'nei Yisrael. They were separated by Hashem, from among the b'nei Yisrael, to be the ones to help the koyanim in their avodah. That's the pshat of the pasuk. V'nasato salvim la'aron u'levona, we should give the levim to Aaron and his sons. Nesunim, nesunim, hey moloi, they were given to Aaron. Me'es b'nei Yisrael, not as representatives, not from the b'nei Yisrael, but from among the b'nei Yisrael. They were separated in order to be there, in order to be present there, for Aaron to help Aaron and, Aaron and his sons to protect the Mishkan, for, to make sure that no Yidin would come in. And here the Rebbe adds, Another very interesting point. The way our Chomoshim are printed, in Posik test, there's two Rashis. There's the second Rashi, Meis B'nei Yisrael, the one that we're explaining now. And before that, the one I skipped, on the words, Nesunim Heim Oloi, Rashi says, Le'ezra. On the words, Dibra Maschil, Nesunim Heim Oloi, Le'ezra. And when you read it, excuse me, it's a very strange Rashi. First of all, Rashi only seems to explain, be explaining the word loy, not the word nesunim hema. Secondly, Rashi doesn't seem to be con- contributing anything to the understanding of the posuk. What does Rashi want to tell us? That, that, that the Levim were helping the Kayanim? We already know that from before. Rashi said before, Levim alolo Messiah What's this Rashi here? Nesunim hema loy la Ezra. There's a little parenthesis in the Sicha where the Rebbe says it's possible that actually these two Rashi's are really one Rashi. They were separated in, in error. And it's one Rashi. Where Rashi is really only coming to explain that Me'es B'nai Yisrael doesn't mean from the B'nai Yisrael, but from among the B'nai Yisrael. Doesn't mean they were contributed, they were given by the B'nai Yisrael, but it means they were separated from among the B'nai Yisrael to serve the Koyanim. According to this, the Rebbe says, perhaps, perhaps the Rebbe sort of says it as a... Uh, 
he says, the Rebbe says, oi, like, you know, or, but, but it, it seems this is the way the Rebbe wants to learn Pshat, that these two Rashi's are one Rashi, and there's only one question. There's nothing difficult to understand in the words, Nesunim Heim Aloi. They were given to Aaron, like the Torah says before, to help Aaron to protect the Mishkan. The only thing that is bothering Rashi here is, May Eis B'nei Yisroh. Where the simple understanding of that is that they came from the Bnei Yisrael, which this part of the Avodah Salavim wasn't coming from the Bnei Yisrael. So, so you have to touch like this, the Rebbe says. Nasunim heim aloy li Ezra. You have to Rashi like this. Nasunim heim aloy li Ezra. That the Yidin were gi- given to the Kayanim to help them. May Eis Bnei Yisrael. Come on, mitoich Bnei Yisrael. It's all a lead up. That the avo- like, like we explained before, that the Avoid that the Levim did in assistance of the Kayanim. The avoid that the Levim did to help the coin and protect the Mishkan, to make sure that Eden wouldn't come in, wasn't, in this case, the Levim were not me'es Bnei Yisrael. They didn't come from the Bnei Yisrael. They weren't representatives of the Bnei Yisrael. They were not contributed by the Bnei Yisrael, but rather they were taken by Hashem, separated from the rest of Bnei Yisrael, Mishar Kolo Eder, but not their Shluchim. And finally, the Rebbe adds an explanation in Pasuk Yud Beis. Again, when the Torah concludes this, Hashem says, I took the Levim. New Parsha. Pasuk Yiralef, new Parsha. Hashem says, I chose the Levim, I took them. Mitoich Bnei Yisrael. And again, here on the words, Vani hinei lokachti salavim, zokt rashi, posik yud beis. Vani hinei lokachti, vani zokt rashi. And I, says Hashem, mehechon zachisi ben, how did I earn, how did I acquire the levim? Mitoich b'nei Yisrael, from among the b'nei Yisrael, sheyiyu Yisrael soichr inoison, that the Jewish people hired them, l'sheirus sheli, alidei abchoirus, the Jews paid for them, and, and, they, and they contributed them they contributed the Levim to Hashem for, for, for this Avoidah. Frek the Rebbe, I don't understand. Before the Torah said, Me'es B'nei Yisrael, Rashi says, it means Mitoich B'nei Yisrael. And now that the Torah says, Mitoich B'nei Yisrael, once again Rashi flips it. Mitoich B'nei Yisrael, in this case, is Rashi, doesn't mean from among the B'nei Yisrael, but this time Mitoich B'nei Yisrael means from the B'nei Yisrael. Why is Rashi changing the Pshat of the Pasuk? Again, says the Rebbe, the same Nakuda, the same word. Because in this case, now that it's a new Pasha, now that the Torah began talking about something else, Hashem says, Va'ani I chose the Levim. We're now no longer talking about the Avoida that the Levim did in order to service the Koyanim. We're not talking about that anymore. It's a new Pasha. So, Hashem says, I chose the Levim, I took them, I separated them. Mitoich B'nei Yisrael, not from among the B'nei Yisrael, but from the B'nei Yisrael. I took them from the B'nei Yisrael, in other words, as shluchim, as emissaries from, of the B'nei Yisrael. We're now talking about, once again, the avoid that the Levim did as shluchim of the Yidin. Hashem says, where did I get, how was I zoicha? to the Levim, how did I get them? Because they take the place of the Bechayrim, etc. But because in this case, we're now no longer talking about the Avoida, here in Pasuket Beis, we're now no longer talking about the Avoida which the Levim did to help the Koyanim. We're talking now about the Avoida which the Levim did as representatives of the Bnei Yisrael. So mitoich Bnei Yisrael in Pasuket Beis doesn't just mean that Hashem separated from, the, uh, doesn't just mean that Hashem separated them from among the Bnei Yisrael, but rather what it means is that Hashem separated them and took them from the Bnei Yisrael. In this case, they are acting as shluchim of the Bnei Yisrael to do this type of avoidah in the Mishkan. al Koponim, this is the way the, the Rashis are learned according to the Sikha, the way the Rebbe explains it. Bottom line, there were two types of avoidahs that the Levim did in the Mishkan. One was, the Rebbe calls it an avoidah shlilis, like a negative avoidah, to make sure Yidin didn't go into the Mishkan, to make sure nobody went into the Mishkan that wasn't supposed to, that they did really just to help the Koyanim. And the other avoidus, everything else that the Levim did, were inherently, were Be'etzem, jobs that the Yisraelim, that the rest of Klal Yisrael were supposed to do. And the Levim, 
acted as shluchim, as emissaries of the Bnei Yisrael, and did the avoider on their behalf in the Beis HaMikdash. And for this, the, the Yisraelim paid them, first of all, with maestras, as we learned before, and second of all, they, the Levine themselves got this position because they took the place of the Bechoyrim, of all of Klal Yisrael, to do this avoider in the Mishkan. al Kopanim, this is the, the main Nakuda of the Sicha here. There's, there's many, many details, but I wanted to, to, to learn the Rashi's uh, together with you, as the Rebbe explained them. I just want to conclude with, um, with perhaps uh, uh, an insight or maybe just rewording slightly in different words what the Rebbe is saying, specifically here about the Avoida of the Levim. You see, when you learn the Sicha and you think for a minute about what the Rebbe is saying, what the Rebbe is really saying is that the Levim had no Metzias for themselves. They either helped the Kayanim in what they were supposed to do, or they helped, they acted as Shluchim of the Israelim in what they were supposed to do. But what was the Metzias of the Levim? The Metzias of the Levim seems almost, excuse me, seems almost non existent. Maybe, maybe you could put this in different words. Chesidus talks about what's called Memutza Hamafsik and Memutza Hamachaber. So Memutza Hamafsik means if you have let's say, Ruvain and Shimon, and they cannot get along, they cannot communicate with each other. So you take a third entity, you take a Levi, and the Levi can communicate with Ruvain, and the Levi can communicate with Shimon, and somehow in Levi's world, through Levi, Ruvain and Shimon are able to coexist, and they're able to get along, and we're able to make some kind of arrangement between the two. This is generally called a Mamutza HaMafsik. It's called a Mamutza HaMafsik. Mafsik means interrupts. It interrupts between the two because... The Mamutza never really creates any unity between the, between the two of them. It's just like, so to speak, like a moderator, or like a mediator, excuse me, where the mediator is basically able to get the two of them to agree, and they sign some papers, and you know, and when they're done, each one goes their own way, and perhaps they don't fight with each other anymore, or something like that. But then Chesidah says, there's a Mamutza HaMachaber. What's a Mamutza HaMachaber? A Mamutza HaMachaber is where something is able to be Megala, is able to reveal that these Reuven and Shimon that seem to be in opposition to each other, it can show that there's a common denominator between them. It can bring that out within both of them and bring out a unity that exists within them. And then once the Mamutza does that, then there's nothing else other than Reuven and Shimon, who previously we couldn't see how they could get along, but now they're getting along beautifully because the Mamutza has shown that they're inherently one. The Mamutza has, has revealed the achtas that exists between them inherently. The difference is that in the case of the Mamutza HaMafsik, the Mamutza HaMafsik is always a Matthias, it's always an existence that creates unity between the two, etc. Mamutza HaMachaber is not a Matthias, it's a non-existent entity. It's just there to bring out the unity between the two of them, right? So, so when I was learning Chesidus, in Yeshiva, the Moshe they gave, they gave us for this, for Mamutza HaMachaber, is what's called Karen Zovis, right? Karen Zovis means a corner. You have one wall going this way, and you have one wall going that way, and where they meet, there's a corner. So what are you going to say? The corner is a pisa, Karen Zovis, a, pisa, a third Metzius, that has the power to bring together the northern wall and the western wall. Nonsense. The corner is not a separate Metzius. Where the northern wall and the western wall meet up, it creates a Karen Zovis. It creates a corner. Where the two walls become one, you have a Mamutza Machaber called the Karen's office. So, again, I'm using a little bit different Oishis, but on a deeper level, if you think about what the Rebbe is saying, he's talking about the, 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 the Avoidus of Levim. What's the greatest thing you can say about the Avoid of the Levim in the Mishkan? What's the depth, what's the Oyma Konyonim of the Avoid of, of the Levim? They did all sorts of things. They sang Shira and they took the Mishkan apart and they carried it and they put it back together and Ahin and Ahed. The Torah gives them so much airtime. Yeah, 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 says the Rebbe. It's all true. But at the end of the day, they were bitl by Metzius. The Levim themselves were like a Mamutza HaMachabra, so to speak. In other words, every job they had was either helping the Koyanim or helping Bishlichusim Shalai Yisraelim. The Levim themselves, bitl by Metzius. The, the Koyan, in other words, there's a Metzius of Koyanim, there's an Avoid of Koyanim, and there's a Metzius of Yisraelim, Avoidus Yisraelim. The Koyanim had their own Avoidus, all sorts of things they had to do. 
One of the things they had to do was protect the Mishkan to make sure that the Eden shouldn't go in. In that aspect of the avoid of the Koyanim, the Leviim were there to help them, to help them in their avoida. In the avoida, which was inherently the avoid of the Koyanim to protect the Mishkan, the Leviim helped them. And then on the other side, you had the Yisraelim, where Yisraelim, the, the old Klal Yisrael, where Klal Yisrael built the Mishkan and dedicated all the necessary material, and they were given the mitzvah, and inherently, Be'etzem, Sotrashi, explains the Rebbe, all the Yisraelim should be working in the Mishkan. Okay, but Poyol, but Metzius, it's too much, the Mishkan's not, it's not feasible for all the Yisraelim to work in the Mishkan. So the Poyol, practically, he was carried out by the Levim. But even when the Levim did everything they did in the Mishkan, whatever they did, they did B'Shlichusam of the Yisraelim. So at the end of the day, the Levim are working in the Mishkan. When we talk about the Levim themselves, they're working either to help the Koyanim or as representatives of the Yisraelim. So there's, there's Koyanim and there's Yisraelim. The Mamutsa HaMachabra, so to speak, between them is the Levim, who are functioning either as, Koyan, either as helping the Koyanim or as or Bishlichusam of the Yisraelim. What does that mean? That means that the Levim were chas v'sholem not important? That means that the Levim didn't chas v'sholem have their own chashivas? They didn't have their own significance? It's the exact opposite. It's the exact opposite. The greatest maila, the greatest strength, the greatest shevach you could say about the Levim, their bitl was such that when they worked in the Mishkan, they were not a metzius for themselves whether they were working in the Mishkan or out of the Mishkan, whatever it was that they did, in any capacity that they, fu- that they, that they functioned in, it was always b'shlichusam, b'ezram, of, of the avoida that wasn't inher- inherently theirs. Either they were helping the Koyanim in their avoida, or they were representing the Israelim in their avoida. The Sicha concludes, the Rebbe says at the end, with that famous haloch in Rambam, loy shevet levi bilvad, that this does not apply only to shevet levi, but kol echod vechod, every yid who, who dedicates their lives could be elevated like Shevet Levi and like Koyanem. The Ramam even says it could become Kodesh Kodoshim. What's Kodesh Kodoshim of a yid? What's, what's the highest level to aspire to of a yid? The highest level, what's the greatest thing you could say? The greatest avoider that a yid should aspire to should become Kodesh Kodoshim. What is it? The greatest avoider of a yid in this Sikha the Rebbe says is what? To help a yid. To help another yid. A Koyan has an avoider. Help him do his avoider. The Israelim have an avoider. Help them do their avoider. That should become your whole metzius. That should become your whole existence. That is the ultimate, that's the highest thing a person could ever aspire to be. A person who does that, in the words of the Rambam, raise a miskadesh, v'nasa koydesh kodoshim. May Hashem help us. We should continue to learn the Rebbe Sichas. We should continue to inspire us and continue to grow mechayel ol'chayel. Yashukayach.